I'm Steve Miller. Welcome to Entering Into Space. to the last video. I decided to make this the last video because I'm kind of running out of stuff to do on this. Um, anyway, we've covered quite a bit and now it'll be four videos. Um, basically started out with Deep Sky Stacker. We did a curves and select and mask to enhance the nebulosity. And then we did, uh, which is, you still see the Layers over here, we did some sharpening of the details um, to bring out you know, some of the lower portions or darker portions of this nebulosity to give it some depth. And the last video, I'm just going to concentrate on the stars and some final touches and then saving it off. So, the first thing in dealing with our stars, I want to work on is creating a star mask so i'm just highlighting uh, the stars and increasing the color and then what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the stars and then paint back in some of the bright ones which is something i learned on another video uh youtube video that i think was out like seven years ago uh this guy his channel is called boodle woodle believe it or not um, but really great information. It really helped me out a lot. It was like the first videos that I saw that I could actually follow and made sense. So I don't think he's put out a video in a while, but if you uh, guys look it up, check it out. He's got some great stuff. So I'm just kind of taking this one step further. So the first thing we want to do is create a star mask. And what we're going to do here is since we have these three layers, we're going to come in here to uh, layer. Flatten, and then we're going to duplicate that layer. And with the top layer selected, we're going to come up here to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. And with this radius slider, we want to adjust this until most of the stars are gone except for the brighter ones. You can still see those it's in here. So for me, that's about a radius of 20. And we're going to click OK. So with that done, we come back to this background copy, the top copy. And we're going to change the blending mode to uh, difference. And most all of our nebulosity 
has disappeared. There's a little bit left in there, but it's gotten rid of most of it. So with that being done, we want to now select our stars. And we go back to the same method that I've used in the other videos is to come over here and go select color range. And we're going to change this to highlights. Now, if you can see the lagoon nebula is in here where the stars are kind of green aqua. And we want to adjust this slider until we're picking up just a few of the stars where lagoon nebula was, but mostly these outside stars. As we move it all the way over here, we're starting to pick up some nebulosity and we don't want to do that. And a lot of these really dim stars that you see, or I can zoom in, like down in here, this none of these processes are really going to touch some of these stars. I'm just trying to grab some of the brighter stars here. So we're going to adjust this um, range slider until we're picking up just a few of the stars here, but mostly the stars around where the Lagoon Nebula is. When we like that, we're going to click OK. So now we want to modify this selection to really get in on these stars and get a good round selection. So the first thing we're going to do to get just a little bit, a little bit more of the star here, is we're going to come up here to select, modify, expand. I think we've gotten most of the star already, so I'm just going to expand it by one pixel. You see it's increased that selection. But you can also see it's kind of jaggedy. Jaggedy? Jaggedy. So we're going to come back in here and select, modify, feather. We're going to feather it by three pixels. That really kind of rounded off the selection. We'll come back out. We like that selection. And we're going to come back over here to our background copy and we're going to change the blending mode back to normal. Our stars are selected. We're going to take this background copy, we're going to right click on it, and we're going to delete it. Yes, and then we're going to duplicate that copy. So now we've got uh, 80 85% of our stars selected. We want to separate them from this image and put them on their own layer. So the way we do that again is um, layer new layer of our copy so we got our stars up here even though they're here we've made a copy of them remember that we can work on and that will enhance our stars so the first thing we're going to do with this star layer selected and we can rename it if you want stars is i just like to go ahead and come in here to this Trusty camera raw filter. And you can't see anything, but who cares? We're going to increase the exposure. We're going to boost the clarity and the dehaze. We're going to increase the vibrance and the saturation. Uh, come over to the detail tab. We're going to do just a little bit of luminance and color noise reduction. And we're going to increase the sharpening about 20%. Um, Probably going to increase that exposure just a little bit more. And I click OK. So let my very slow computer do its thing. And then you see our stars have definitely gotten brighter. Yeah, see the difference or not. You can also run an action to increase the star color. If you want, we come in here to actions. Increase star color. Let's run that. See what it looks like. Shouldn't take too long. I like a lot of color in my stars. It really adds some some value, some additional value. Because I can also I've processed pictures where all my stars are like green or red, and uh, that's just learning. <clears throat> so just about done. 
I think it's definitely helped. Um, that out of the way. I'm also noticing, you now we've got some nice bright stars, I'm also noticing that we've got a little bit of a halo going on from our last process. So we can do a lot of weird things to get rid of that. Um, but one of the easy methods is to go back in here to select color range, change this over to uh, sample colors, and zoom in here and kind of click some of this kind of lightish, lightish. Oh, I'm making up words. So we've basically selected our our dark background and we can adjust this fuzziness slider to like it and with that selected we use our selected mask tool which is select selected mask adjust the feather everything's kind of fuzzy Look okay so we've got all this selection dancing around here to keep so to keep it from distracting us we're going to go control h and that turns that selection off and we just simply come in here to image adjustment with the background copy selected image adjustment uh brightness we're going to increase the contrast and we're going to drop the brightness down just a little bit. We're going to click OK to that. You can see a little bit of a glow that we probably could have got rid of with Gradient Exterminator, but we're going to do it this way. You can definitely tell a really increasing contrast there. <laughs> <clears throat> so we've got a star layer up here that we've brightened. We worked on our background just a little bit, but we've got a lot of stars in our nebulosity. We've got a lot of stars in general that to me can be a little distracting, especially in this neighborhood uh, where you're in the heart of the Milky Way. So we're going to merge that star layer down. We're going to come here and we're going to deselect our black. Don't forget we had our black layer selected here, or black layer, we just had the dark brown selected. So with these two layers, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce our stars and then we're going to create a star mask to paint back in the brighter stars. And this is a really cool method that actually, once again, gives you not only depth to your nebulosity, we worked on that, but it gives you depth to your stars. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is select our stars again. So the way we do that is to go to select all range, and we're gonna go to highlights, and we're going to adjust this range until We've gotten most of our stars. We're, we are going to be getting our nebulosity in this. So, I just want to adjust this until we get as many stars picked up in this selection as we can without blowing it out. We don't want that. We want to find that balance. Now that we found that balance, we're going to click OK. And we're going to do our same. Selection modifier, get nice round stars, select, modify, expand that selection by one pixel, and then come back in here to select, modify, and feather it by three pixels. Uh, so now that we've got basically that selected, uh, we're going to come in here and we're going to hit Control H. And we're going to go now we want to reduce our stars and the way we're going to do that is come in here to filter other 
that on. So we're going to leave this radius at one, and we're going to click. Okay. So with that done, we're going to come back in here and hit Control H to see our selection again. And then hit Control J, make a copy of that. Now we're going to come back down here to our background layer, click on it, right click on it, and delete it. And we're going to come to this new background layer that we have and pull that down and duplicate that copy. So now with that done, we're going to select this top layer. <clears throat> we're going to go over here to our eraser tool, like that. We're going to make sure that our opacity is at 100%. Our flow is at 100%. We're going to come in here to these stars that are brighter and we're just going to select them. I don't know if you can see or not. Please, no judging my horrible stars. We're basically painting back in our brightest stars. Some of those stars didn't get selected in the nebulosity, but that's fine. But some of these out here did. Now this is some serious personal preference. You know, what stars do you want to be brighter than the other ones? And obviously, I'm not going to sit here and bore you with me choosing all these stars. So I'm going to pause the video and paint back in the stars that I want to paint in and I'll be right back. All right, so we're back and I've basically gone through and chosen the stars that I wanted to highlight. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and turn this layer off. So everything's bright. off and then there's the stars reduced and the brighter stars painted back in. And to me it just gives it a little more um, of a three-dimensional effect I think especially too many stars can detract especially like and what was it the uh, eastern veil first time I really processed that and you could barely see it for the stars so reducing the stars really helped that one uh, something like a, a galaxy like M51, there's very few stars around it. Star count around it's pretty low, so you may not feel the need to do that. Um, but anyway, just another tool for you guys to use, and hopefully it helps. So now that I've done that, I'm going to come back in here and flatten this layer. And duplicate it. The... Uh, the last thing that we can do to kind of finalize this off for me at this point is just put it back through the camera raw filter and just make some small adjustments. Um, I'm going to slide this black slider down to kind of get, no matter every, anything I do, I keep getting a little bit of a halo around it. So create some contrast, add a little bit. Um, increase the exposure to brighten it up just a little bit. It's a personal preference. Or you can dim it back down. Um, the clarity is going to brighten it. But it's also going to start increasing some graininess to it. you got to watch that. You can oversaturate things. I've definitely been guilty of that. But to me, that would be too much. I want to slide the saturation down. Kind of happy medium, but increase that vibrance. Um, back in the details tab, we can definitely smooth out what we've done and sharpen it a little bit and click OK. And I think we're done. I think uh, for the most part, the key to this and it's hard to do, I really, really, really had to work on it, is 
how much information do you have? Can you keep stretching this or have you overstretched it? Um, the analogy I like to give people is imagine taking a piece of paper with information on it and folding it in half. So the person you're showing it to can't see the information. And you say, well, it's here. It's in this piece of paper, but you can't see it because I haven't opened it up. So the more you open it up, the more you reveal the information inside. Um, just because it's completely closed doesn't mean the information is there. And that's great. But if you keep opening it up and you keep tearing it apart and spread it out, it's going to become harder and harder to see. And you're going to lose resolution and detail. So if you're like me right now, you're shooting one and a half to two hours worth of data. There's only so much you can do to these pictures. Um, hopefully in the future, because I've just started doing this, I can start working on shooting uh, longer projects, putting four, five, six, ten hours on these projects. And that's my goal. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope it helped. I hope even if it's just a little bit. Um, I hope I was able to explain the processes that I use thoroughly. And I hope that I'm able to pay it for it because I definitely received a lot of help through YouTube and Facebook and so many places have helped me um, on this journey that I've been on for about eight months now. So stay tuned because I'm going to do some uh, next videos are going to be about the gear that I use and hopefully some new stuff I'm going to buy in the future and some unboxing and reviews of that stuff and how I use it. So appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot and clear skies.